Yeah. Uh, we bless God for Apostle's life. Uh, the month of uh, um, March, we've been celebrating uh, his 60th birthday, and it's 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 a big deal. You can say that again. We're celebrating Apostle's 60th birthday, Amen. and it is a big deal. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. It is a big deal. We bless God for his life. We bless God for how far he's brought him, mm -hmm. and we say a happy birthday to you. I know it's a whole year of celebration. Yeah. And uh, thank you all for giving to him. Thank yeah. you for the lovely messages sent to him and uh, things that you have shared here at the house. I just want to uh, thank you so much for celebrating Amen. this man that God blessed me with. Amen. Amen. And Amen. I get to share him with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so bless God for your life. I know that this year is a significant year. This 60 that you turn around is a significant year. And we bless God for all that he's done in your life. And for the many more that he's doing in your life. He is such a unique person. You have to know him to know what I'm talking about. He is so unique. The love that he has for people is just amazing. The love and the patience that he has for people is amazing. I'm not looking into the camera. I'm looking at him because I'm addressing him. Amen. Yeah, the love you have for people is amazing. It amazes me. It amazes me. When I first met him, I was like, what is this old soul in this young body? I mean, he was, the, he was young, but he was like an old soul. And I just used to wonder at the way he does things. But it's because God has, God has made him a father Amen. to many who don't even have a father. Amen. And so we bless God for your life. Uh, he started ministering me to my life. He started tutoring me, so to speak. Uh, when we just met, and uh, I wasn't prophesying then, I shared it before. I wasn't prophesying then, but one of the first questions he asked, well, do you prophesy? I said, no. I think the next, because we used to go to the same church, the next meeting, I was prophesying. The next meeting, I was prophesying. Just by the question he asked me, provoked what God had put in me already. And so that by the next meeting, I started prophesying. Hallelujah. And so we bless God for your life and we celebrate you. I want you to know that you're celebrated every day. I want you to know that you are celebrated every day. I appreciate you and I appreciate God for your life and for the impact. The impact. He has touched many lives. Many, many, many lives. He has touched many lives. Not just here in the state, but even outside the state. He such many lives. Amen. And your labor is not in vain. And I pray that the Lord will su supply every need, every desire of your heart, that the Lord will supply it. Amen. Sometimes when I'm praying for him, I tell God, leave me, leave me. Just, just don't worry about me. Don't even care about me or what I'm asking you for. I pray that you grant his heart desire. Amen. That's the prayer I pray for him in my closet. I said, forget about me. Just grant his heart desire. Because he's been faithful to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so love you much. And bless God for your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I said this um, birthday is significant because on the 27th of February, that's when we kick off the celebration of, uh, of, of his birthday. And that day, I know you all know we had a guest minister here. But that day, God spoke to me over here. And uh, so for a month, I've been pondering, I've been meditating on the word that God spoke to me for the house and I guess for the body of Christ. All of us listening to me today. And so that's what I'm going to share with you. And I say, I say it is significant because God knows what it's about to do right. in this life and in our lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so let's turn our Bibles to Numbers 14. Hallelujah. He's gone all by himself. The song we sang last week, I just couldn't, it just couldn't leave me. He's gone all by himself. And we give him praise. Amen. So Numbers 14, 21. Sorry, 21 to 24. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, but truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. From 1 to 20, 21 to 24, please. So, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me 
to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their father, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. And he said, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Hallelujah. What the Lord spoke to me was to let you all know to make sure that you have the spirit that Caleb and Joshua had. Hallelujah. Amen. Why would God say that? Because he knows where he's taking you. He knows where he's taking us. Yeah. And so he wants us to make sure to work on that that we have the attitude, the disposition of Caleb and Joshua. That's right. Hallelujah. And so let's go back now and go to Numbers 13. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 13, 1 to 3. I'm going to jump in and out of it a little bit. But... There's power in the word of God. When God speaks to you, the word of God is so powerful that, yeah. listen, sometimes your whole body vibrates. Because the, there's power in the word of God. Right. That's why you don't want to belittle the word of God. Mm. It doesn't matter what it is. You don't want to play down on what God tells you or what you've hear, heard from, you've heard from a, a preacher. Hallelujah. So 13, uh, 1 says, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I have, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Three says, so Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord. All of the all of them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. This was not something Moses just out of the blue decided to do. It was the word God spoke to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so he had to do what God had told him to do. Yes. In the same way God has given us a man of God. Or God has given you a pastor if you're listening to me and you don't belong to the very house. And God gives them instruction or him instruction to be able to give you the direction that you should go. That's why we have to listen to them. That's why we have to follow and follow right. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they're not doing it because they feel like doing it. They're doing it because God has commanded them to do so. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not what they want. Yep. It's about the instructions God has given them. Preach. Amen. And when God called them and what, when God commissioned them, you were not there. True. When God gave them the assignment, he didn't, he, he didn't let you in on what he was going to use them for. Hallelujah. That's why we have to listen to the men and women of God over our lives. Hallelujah. Especially if you've decided that this is my house. This is my church family. I want to be part of this house. Then I'm, I'm speaking to you. Amen. 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 Then you need to make sure that you make whatever adjustment you need to make. Yes. So you don't shoot the messenger. Preach. You don't attack the messenger. Preach. Hallelujah. You don't look at the messenger funny. But you listen to the message that he comes with. Yes. Because he will do you good. Amen. 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 Let's go to 17, please. Hallelujah. Yeah. Most of the time I tell you that when God speaks a word to me, it, it almost feels like just prophesy it to you and just go sit down. But he doesn't allow me to. He wants me to share, to share it and break it down. This is not a, even though he spoke it to me, he wants me to share it in a message form for you to hear Hear the heart of the word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Trust me, it would have been easy to just prophesy it to you. Mm -hmm. I would that that for somebody I could have just stood here and prophesied it to you and just sat down. But you didn't want me to do that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so 17 said, Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. Hallelujah. And search it out. All right, now let's jump to 23. 
Then they came to the valley of Eshcol, and there cut and, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. I mean, you get a picture. Get a picture of this real quick. Grace carrying it on a pole by two men. Because he had told them, I'm going to take you to a land that's full with milk and honey. I mean, that land must have some soil. The soil in which these grapes were grown. Hallelujah. And they, uh, 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 and, and carried, they carried it between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. 24. Hallelujah. The place was called the Valley of Ishkal because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. Hallelujah. We're going all the way to 33. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It, it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and, and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people. Why? He quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and, took, and, sorry, and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Amen. Then Caleb quieted the people. I'm sorry, I'm going back. Go back to 20, uh, to 30, 30, 30, please. Then Caleb quieted the people. Why? Because those who were speaking were giving a bad report. That's right. And they were so quick to come out with their negative report. Yeah. Moses sent 12 people, right? Mm -hmm. One from each tribe. Each tribe. How come all of a sudden, this negative, people with the negative news wanted to speak first? How come? Hallelujah. How come they wanted to share what they were feeling first? But they spoke first. And so Caleb had to jump in. That's why sometimes it doesn't matter where you are. When you know someone is speaking, negatively, you have to come in and speak positively. Right. You have to declare what you know is the word of God or the mind of God. Yes. Even if it's about your life or whatever situation you are in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It could be about a job. I mean, some, a co-worker could be talking so negatively about a job, but you know you work there. Yeah. You'll get your paycheck there. Yeah. So right away, you have to step in and say, no, 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 no. This yeah. place is not going to shut down. This place is going to be all right. Yeah. We're going to be okay. Yeah. Why? You don't have to sit down and let the negativity go on. No way. Hallelujah. No way. Yes. You have to speak up. Amen. You have to speak up. Hallelujah. Years ago, um, a, a, a family that I know, their brother was going to marry a certain lady. And they were not that crazy about the lady. And so they were, you know, talking down so to speak and uh this one of the family members said why why are you talking down on, on this girl i'm also believing god to get married to somebody and because the way we are praying for me to get married that family is so also praying for that girl to get married to somebody right so don't play down on the person hallelujah i pray i bless god that that person spoke up sometimes when we need to speak up we don't and that's not right. Amen. You have to speak up yes. and say the right thing. Yep. God expects you to. God, if you are the only one there with the truth and you decide to hold your peace, the negativity will go on yep. and no one will arrest it. It said, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession.
affliction, for we are well able to overcome it. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. That as a house, when the leader comes with whatever God has told him to do or ask us to do as a, as a house to move forward, let's shima, let's together agree with the leader so that we can go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what the Lord told me. He said, tell the people that when the leader, when the leadership, when the man of God comes up and says, let's do this or we are doing this, don't, don't fight it. Don't come out with negativity. Don't see it impossible. Don't see that we can't do it. But gather around with him and say, yes, we're going to do this. Hallelujah. And as we're, talk, we're talking about the $29,000, I want you to know that, yes, we're all doing what we can, but we're still trusting God that this will be paid off in no time. That's what I want you all to believe. Set your faith for that. Because maybe God is going to give you, God is going to allow you to, because you're releasing your faith, God is going to allow you to come into money. God is going to, because your faith is going to draw someone to come in and drop the money into your hand, the whole money, and this will be paid off tomorrow. It's all right to do the 500. It's all right to do whatever we're doing. That's okay. But we are releasing our faith that this will be paid off in no time. That's how you walk with God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what the Lord wants me to let you know. That team up with the man of God. Team up with the team of the house. When it comes out with what God is uh, uh, ushering us to do, go ahead. Don't be, don't be, what's the word? A downer. Don't look at you. Don't look at your, your, your finances. Don't look at where you are and, so, and see yourself out of the situation. Don't see, I mean, don't see yourself not part of it. Don't oppose it. Don't oppose it. But see yourself part of it. Amen. See yourself part of it. Years ago, I was giving a prophetic word that I said, don't look at your pocketbook. If you say this word to somebody who's previously did not know what it meant to not have, but all of a sudden, you are in a situation where you are experiencing not having. And if you just tell me, don't look at your pocketbook, that's not enough. Because you have to break it down for me. What for me to do so I don't have to look at my pocketbook? Because every situation speaks, right? Every situation has a voice. All right? I did not know what it was to not have. And all of a sudden, I found myself in a place where I'm experiencing not having enough. And if you're not careful, the little you have, yeah. you want to hold on to yeah. it. Yeah. You, yes, the little you have, you hold on to it. Yeah. So if you prophesy to me that I don't look at your pocketbook, I need more than that. Yeah. Tell me what I can do so I don't have to look at that. Yeah. Let me know that God is my source. Yeah. Let me know that God is my supplier. Yeah. Let me know that he is the one who will make sure I have food on my table. Yeah. Let me make sure that when I mean make sure that when I give what I have to him, I will not go to bed hungry. Yeah, Teach me how to trust in my God. Yeah, and so if you are here and you're feeling that way that you've been in a place where you've not had enough, and now you're hearing that we have to give extra to support the house of God, you're feeling like out of it because I can't, I hear you. I know where you are. But I come with the word of God today Amen. to you. I come to you let you know today that God is the God who supplies all your needs. Amen. Hallelujah. Just be willing. Just be willing to take the word that is coming forth and allow God to use you to do mighty things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so let's 31 please. Are you getting something? I, I trust that the word is hitting home. Yeah. Amen. All right. 31 says, But the men who had gone out with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Oh, wow. They are stronger than we. 32 says, And they gave the children of Israel a bad report. King the old King James calls it evil report. It says that they give them a bad report. Of the land which they had spied. I wonder if they had ever seen grace being carried on a pole before. For them to give that bad report. Right? They said, they gave the people a bad report of the land which they had spied out. 
saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants. Wow, they got some words. I mean, but there were people living there. How can you say it devours the people? <laughs> Exa- I, mean, I mean, exaggerating on a way that, on a level that's like unheard of. They said, the people, the, uh, it's a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it were men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Enoch, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. That is a lie. That is a lie. But the situation spoke to them so much that this is what they were seeing. They forgot everything God had told them. Hallelujah. Your situation could be speaking to you too. And and he's telling you something contrary to what God has said. Your situation is speaking to you. It's telling you something contrary to what God has told you about your life, about your finances, about your children, about your health. But remember what God has said about you. Hallelujah. Remember what God has said about you. And don't give in to that situation. But the Bible says, my sheep, they know my voice. And the stranger, they will not follow. That's a strange voice. Yes. That is a strange voice telling you something that your father has not spoken. Amen. And don't listen to that strange voice. Amen. Why? Because you can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go to Numbers 14 now. Hallelujah. Hmm. Glory, to Glory to God. Numbers 23, 19, we're not going there. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. That's why when your situation is... Start, Sorry, let's go, let's go to Numbers 20, uh, 23, 19 first before we go back to Numbers. Numbers 23, 19. When your situation is speaking to you, you have to identify that this is a lie. This is not God speaking to me. This is not what God has said to me. And then you have to declare the word of God to it. Hallelujah. It says God is not a man that he should lie. If he says he's going to give you a land flow with milk and honey, flow with, it's flow with milk and honey. He said there are people there. There were people there. We read it. The Amorites, the, 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 all of them, they were there. But he said he was going to give it to them. That's it. Why weren't they holding on to the word of God? That was the ten spoke negatively. The ten, only two stood up and said, we can go. Let's go get it at once. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Speak that to yourself. When your situations are speaking to you, speak to yourself. Hallelujah. Speak this word to yourself because your father is not a liar. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Numbers 13 now. I mean 14 now. And I'll read from 1 to 9. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can do it. Amen. Amen. We can do all that God has called us to do. Amen. Because it's not by might and not by power. Yes. You guys didn't bring amen to church? <laughs> you didn't bring some? I did. Okay, go ahead. Go, go within you and pull some out. Because they're there. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. <laughs> to God. Yo, when you come into church, you got to bring a few of them. The hallelujahs. Amen. amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, so. Numbers 14.1, it says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. Because they heard the negative report, the bad and evil report. The whole 10 people affected the whole congregation. And they lifted up their voice and they cried. And the people wept that night. Wow. It says, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Wow. 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 All, if only we had died in in this wilderness. Mm. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Mm, mm, mm. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Wow. 
Then Moses and Aaron fell on their face, or faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Do you know that some people do that to men and women of God? In some circles where they have deacons, the deacon board will just meet together and try to vote the preacher out. Associates, pastors, with some part, they will meet together and try to vote the pastor out because he's coming out with some things that they're not used to. It's coming out with some things that they're not ready to do. And so that's exactly what they're doing. Let's select, really select a new person, a new leader, so we can go back to Egypt. They forgot everything that happened in Egypt. They forgot everything. They forgot the, the torment. They forgot the torture. They forgot the labor. The hard labor that they were going through, they forgot all about that. They want to go back. Because mm. we don't want change. Uh, we don't want change. But if you have a right leader, he will or she will push you yes. to what God has called you to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He or she will push you. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Apostle here, I'll tell you something funny. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny when it started. You know he's part of the praise team, so to speak, or he plays his uh, lead guitar. Sometimes, I don't know if the praise and worship leaders are okay with it now, or they've got, they are, they are, they are, they, they, they're better, maybe, probably they're better. Let me put it down, because I didn't talk to them. They're used to it. Listen, you have to know that this man will push you. Sometimes when we sing a song for worship, right? I mean, we sing a song for worship, we've enjoyed ourselves. And then he will say, let's use it for, for praise. And musically, you will think, it just, it just will not work. It just will not work. But they've gotten used to him. So when he tells them to use it for praise, they just flow with it. And we've had instances where when we use it, the presence of God goes to a whole new level. Let me pray that way. Like last week. Even if you pay attention as I come to that, you realize that we sing the song for worship, and then when we go to sing it in praise, you, you ask yourself, Oh, is this going to work? But this is somebody who's going to push you. Amen. He is going to push you. And so if you don't want to act like these people, all right, you don't want, you don't want to say, Let's select a new leader. Someone will not select a new leader, they'll just leave. They'll just leave the church. Because he's just too much. Can't deal with him. He's just too much. Amen. Amen. But he wants to push you into what God has for you. That's right. Who knows that by just these little changes, you allowing these little changes to take place in your life, God is going to use these little changes to launch you into what you've been waiting for to see it happen in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you need a man or woman of God who's going to push you into what God has for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Let's, look, let's, let's read on. Hallelujah. Yes. I have so much to share. But I have to come in when we read uh, 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 some of the verses that has a huge punch. I have to make sure I break it down to you. Amen. All right. So seven. Did you read six? Let's go back to sex to make sure. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jeph Jephna, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Good Hallelujah. They said it's an exceedingly good land. Yes. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. Yes. A land which flows with milk and honey. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Wow, they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear. Hallelujah. This is what a man of God that is ready to push you, that is ready to see what God has deposited in you, will do to you. 
right. Amen. He will tell you, do not fear. You can, you can do this. He will push you, but you have to, you have to align yourself. You have to adjust yourself so you don't rebel against what he's trying to you push you to do. Amen. Or rebel, yes, when you rebel against him, you're rebelling against God because Listen, he's pushing you to do it. Like many, 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 many people will just leave you alone. You don't want to be bad out, leave you alone. But he wants to push you. He wants to push you forward. Amen. He wants you to be able to try new things. Don't be comfortable. If you always want to be comfortable and do what you used to, how are you going to experience God in a new way? You're not going to experience God in a new way. And so just like we, you need a man, a woman of God to push you, I want you today to adjust yourself. As a, as, a, as a member of this house, adjust yourself. As a, as a house, let's adjust ourselves. Let's adjust our mindset. So we'll be able to go when it's time to go. When it's time to move, let's make sure we do. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you know, just like... Take and take possession. That's what the moving is all about. It's about taking possession. Yeah. Amen. Maybe you don't know that you can sing. Maybe you don't know that you can usher. Maybe you don't know that you can do something that um, um, you've been afraid to do. And whenever the man of God comes to you and says, I want you to do this, or would you consider doing this, don't try to preach him. Don't try to say, oh, why you can't do it. But accept and embrace it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he wants you to push you to even take possession of what God wants you to take possession of. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Years ago, I used to, we used to tell Pastor, I, used, I mean, we used to have a discussion about uh, wanting the best for people. And we, I used to say, they have to want it for themselves too. Yeah, God wants the best for you. We as your leaders, we want the best for you. But you have to want it for yourself. Because if you don't want it for yourself, it will be like a fight. We'll be pushing you and you don't want to move, you don't want to badge, and so you, you, you just stay there. And then, and, then, and then it will cause unnecessary friction. That's true. Unnecessary friction. Just be pliable. Amen. Like I was sharing about the praise and worship leaders. Listen, if we try the slow song in a praise song and it doesn't flow well, who got arrested? No. Who went to jail? <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. Just be open and try new things. Yeah. If you have, it's a blessing to have somebody in your life who's going to push you. Be ready. It's a blessing yeah. to have somebody in your life who's going to push you. I'll say it again. And over here, we're not going to read it, but Esther and Esther, yeah. the book of Esther, it's just a few chapters. Go read it. Esther needed Mordecai in her life That's to right. push her yeah. so that the whole people of Israel would be saved. Amen. So just as Esther needed Mordecai, mm. you need a man or woman of God who's going to push you That's to right. go possess the land. Yes. It's not about my, uh, us. It's not about pastor. It's not about myself. It's about what God wants you to do. Amen. 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 So but quickly, let's I'm, I'm bugging you all today. Let's quickly go back to Esther 414. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to appreciate the one that God has given you to move you, to push you forward. Don't be so strong in what you want to do. Don't be so strong. Like, oh, ask for me. No, I'm not going to do it. I said I can't do it and I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. You're lying to yourself. You can do it. You just need somebody to push you on. You just need somebody to tell you, go ahead and do it. God is with you. Amen. Esther 414 said, for if you remain, after a year, Mordecai had pushed Esther, I mean, coached her to go through all that. Esther was still dragging her feet. She wasn't sure. It was a scary thing, yes, because she was an orphan. She did not belong there. Hallelujah. She did not belong there. Yes. Oh, well, let's take from 13 then. But she didn't belong in the palace. She did not belong there. But God had made a way for her. Right. And let's look at 30. He says, And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. Because you are a Jew too. And when they, when they make the decision to kill all the Jews, they're going to find out you're one. And so you're going to be affected too. And then 14, please. For if you remain completely silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Who knows 
whether you have come to Liberty House for such a time as this. Preach. Who knows whether you are connected to this man and this woman of God for such a time as this. Why? To be prepared for what is ahead of you. That's right. To be prepared to be able, hallelujah, to take the land that God has for you. Yeah. To be prepared to be able, hallelujah, to possess the land that God wants you to possess. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So don't push back. Amen. Against the direction that is coming from the leadership. Amen. Position yourself like Caleb That's right. and Joshua did. That's right. To be able to embrace what God has for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has so much for us. Amen. Let's look at did I finish on? Okay. Let's go to 15. Not done. I have so much to share. Hallelujah. It says then Esther. Oh, no, no, not this one. Let's go back to not in Esther. I was done. Let's go back to Numbers. I think we read nine. Did you read nine? Yes. All right. Let's go to ten then. Or take it from nine. I trust that this word is hitting home. Hashabota Hasaya. I trust that it's hitting home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our brain. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Amen. Wow. Let's go to 11 now. Let's jump to 11. Thank you, Jesus. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? You know, they're refusing to see or hear what God has told them. And so if God is taking it as rejection. He said, then the people said to Moses, how, the law said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? God performed signs among these people. Amen. Okay, let's go to, let's see, 12. If I wanted to hear that. Oh no, let's, okay, let's jump to 21. So 21 to 24 now. I'm doing a lot of jumping, but hallelujah. It says, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God, of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They suddenly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers. Nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. This is a big deal. A lot happened in Egypt. And for those people to forget the mighty deliverance that they experienced is amazing. Hallelujah. Why? Because fear has torment. Fear has a voice. And that's what's going on. It robbed them of the memories that they had. It, did, it robbed them. They, can't, they couldn't even remember that a lot happened in Egypt. Yep. They were protected. They were safe from all the plagues that happened in Egypt. Yep. They were able to walk on dry ground or dry land in the Red Sea. Yes, yes. Huh. God parted the sea for them to walk through yes. to the other side. Yes. They walk, they walk through. And God was able to uh, swallow all their enemies in the water. And yet, the voice of fear has been so loud to them that they are not even saying anything about it. And God is calling that rejection. Don't let your speak, situation speak to you in a way that oh, you forget what God has done or who God is. Don't let your situation speak to, speak to you because it will speak to you. Yes. Don't give in to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully. That's Atoya Mashata. That should be your prayer. You want to follow God fully. Yes. When your obedience be complete in God. It said, and has followed me fully. I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit the land. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a mighty God. Yes. Amen. God is a mighty God. Hallelujah. We have to know how big our God is. Your life, the, He wants to get the glory out of your life. When you walk in the places He wants you to walk, when you walk in what He has for you, He gets the glory. So stop resisting. Amen. Stop resisting. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop resisting. Let's look at Proverbs 78 41. Stop resisting. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's this man of God. If I say his name, you all know him. See, limiting God, limiting God, limiting God is costly. Seriously, limiting God is costly. Proverbs 78 41. I mean, I mean, Psalm 78 41. Hmm. Okay, yes. It says, yes, again and again. They tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Your question will be, God is a big God. How am I limiting him? He, he, he's sovereign. He can do everything he wants to do. He's saying you're limiting him. If you choose to walk in fear and not position yourself to see him as God Almighty in your life, as God who cares, you will live in him with fear. You will live in him and you will not be able to move forward. Now this man of God has been in ministry for 50 years. But he said for the 30 years that he was in ministry, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. He said the creditors were after him. I mean the ministry was not going anywhere. He was struggling for 30 years. 30 years. 30 years, he said nothing was happening in his ministry. And then one day the Lord spoke to him and said, you're limiting me, stop limiting me. And I guess he asked God, how? Not knowing this guy was afraid that if his ministry should explode, he was afraid that he would turn against God. He was afraid that it would get in his head. And so he wasn't stepping out in faith. And so when God ministered to him that you are limiting me because I have put so much in you, but because you're, you're limiting me with your fear, you're not seeing, you're not able to take steps towards what I put in you. And he said he began to change his thought process. He began to take steps towards what God has put in him. And he said within 20 years, what he's been able to accomplish is more than the 30 years of ministry what he had done. Amen. Within 20 years, 20 years, what he's been able to do is more than the 30 years of ministry. Because he said, the Lord told him, no, I've worked on you, I've prepared you. You're not going to take the glory. You are not, it's not going to get in your head. Amen. And so let's make sure that we don't limit God by our mindset. Amen. We don't limit go by the way we see things and the way we grow up. Amen. And one scary thing is we have to watch how we even raise our children. Amen. Because if your mind is not renewed, you're going to limit your children. Yes. Yes. You're going to limit your children. Let me give you one example. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I'm from Ghana. I'm an African mom. Yeah. My child is not going to ride a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because we are afraid of motorcycles. The average mom, we are afraid of motorcycles. Why? Because, I mean, even if, if your car has four, right? Four legs. Yeah. And you can be dangerous. And you can be dangerous. <laughs> How much more, too? <laughs> Amen. So your child is not going to ride a motorcycle. And maybe God has given you a dead devil child who wants to ride a motorcycle. If your mind is not renewed, you're going to talk this child out of the motorcycle. Why? Because you are afraid. You And you are not going to tell the child you are afraid. No, you're not getting a motorcycle. It's not safe. Da, 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 da. You come up with all stories that are not being true. It's all based on fear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. You will raise your children in fear. Yeah. You will raise your grandchildren in fear. But you have to ask 
God to show you the children that he's giving you. Amen. Because some of them, they are dead devil because of the anointing that is on them. Yes. And because of what they are going to do. Yes. They are not you. Yes. They are not you. Yes. They are not going to live your dream. Yes. They are Hamoshe. Yes. They are living God's dream. Yes. And you have to be careful how you raise your children. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You have to raise, be careful how you raise your children. Yes. I remember when our youngest son wanted to play football. Oh my goodness, we talked him out of it. I mean, football, American football. Yeah. Not soccer, I'm talking about American football. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. Oh. I mean, they can, get, they can get hit one time and get paralyzed. <laughs> I mean, and this boy wouldn't budge. Yeah. This boy, I mean, you would come home from work, I mean, from school. I mean, he was in fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade. He would come home, he would get a snack, sit down, do his homework. Listen, it hurts me that I don't have pictures of this or video. I mean, as soon as he, he's done with his homework, and you don't have to tell him to do his homework, you do his homework, and then you go to the backyard. And this boy cuts some cardboards. He asks for a football, so he has the American football. He takes stuff around himself, and he by himself in the backyard, he's practicing uh, a, a linebacker or linebacker or whatever they call them. And he's running, run back and forth. I'm standing in the kitchen window and I'm going, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> and this boy is practicing all by himself. He, he has the ball here. He runs and he practices how he, he, he throws himself down. Wow. You know what we have to do in here? You see what I'm doing? This is what the boy was doing by himself in the backyard. And that was Nathan. So eventually. Eventually, I had to go to God. And I had to pray. And I had to let the angels, and I did. I said, I, 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 I'm, I'm assigning angels on his head. Angels that will protect just the white head. <laughs> and his spine, and his legs, and his whole body. And I'm declaring that he's not going to break a bone. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm declaring that he's not going to break a bone. He's going to play because it's in him. Yeah. It's in the boy. And so finally, we had to sign him up in primary, primary school, and we signed him up. And he was one of the, and he was, he was, he was, he was the top player, and he played all the way to high school yeah. until he decided to switch. He decided to switch to do track. But I'm telling you, as a parent, if you're not careful, yeah. you will raise your children with fear, yeah. and in fear. And we don't want to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to sow that seed in your child. No. Because what is in him is, 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 is bubbling. Mm. It's almost like uh, 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 Elizabeth and uh, Mary's situation. Yeah. The baby that was in Elizabeth's womb lived when Mary greeted her. So there are some things in your children that God has put there. I know you have to guide them. Don't get me wrong. You have to guide your children. Amen. But don't put your children in a box. Yeah. Don't limit them. Advise them. But don't limit them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Let's put your, our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Why? Because of their unbelief. Because they didn't believe God. All that God spoke to them. I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. All by yourself. And the land is for you. Why didn't they say, yeah, let's go get it. It's our land. A land flowing with milk and honey. We're no more slaves. We're not going to serve nobody. We're not going to build no bricks no more for the Egyptians. We're on our own now. Our God who rescued us is going to give us this land. Let's all go and get it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 4, 11 to 15, please. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, and he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. 11 to 15. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. For the equipping of the saints. He gave us this ministry gift for the equipping of the saints. The pastors are supposed to equip you. They're supposed to equip you to do what God has called you to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we all, hallelujah. Let's say, so we all. Yeah. Actually, let's all read it together. Ready? Go. So we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To, the, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro. That's right. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. Mm -hmm. By the trickery of men. Yep. In the cunning craftiness of yeah. deceitful yeah. plotting. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. 15, please. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. This is what the ministry gives. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. This is what God has given them for. So let's all position ourselves well. So we'll be able to receive the direction they bring to us. The instructions they bring to us. As a house, where we are going. How God wants us to touch lives. How God wants us to minister to people. That will be as we receive the ministry gifts. We'll be able to get into the place where all of us. All of us. Will measure up to where God wants us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's so much God has put in you. And he needs it. What he's put in you is for him. And he needs it for the body of Christ. So you have to allow yourself and be pliable. So that. As we team up with the leadership of the man of, and the woman of God, we'll be able to embrace what God has yeah. for us as a house. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and not just as a house, but you as an individual. That's because right. as you yield yourself and as you become pliable to allow yourself to be pushed and to do things that you would not really not do onto things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a step in, yeah. that is you allowing yourself. That is you saying that I'm allowing God to be all that he's designed to be even in me. That's right. Hallelujah. So if you are you are called upon to lead prayer, see it as a privilege. Not for the house, but it's a time for you. You're working on you. God is using that to work on you. To bring you to a place, a place. Hallelujah. And no uh, apostle was told, the Lord told him years ago, go teach my people how to prophesy. And he's doing a marvelous job doing that. Hallelujah. I mean, when somebody comes here and he says, let's prophesy to people, don't drag your feet. Get up and come. Why? You don't have a word. Yes, you don't have a word. But you're taking a step of faith, obeying. And as you take a step of faith, you have the word. Seriously, as you take a step of faith, the word will come because you obey. And you won't grow in what you're doing. So don't let him stand here and say, how many two people will come? And then people are driving their feet. They don't know if they want to come. Come! How many times should he say it? Preach. Yeah, seriously, how many times? Because you're limiting yourself. And you, by you limiting yourself, you're limiting God. Mm -hmm. he, he asked for two people. If five people will come, come. Let him, <laughs> let him tell the other three to go sit down. But don't drag your feet. Just get up and come. He doesn't have to say it. He doesn't have to say it so many times. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is working on you. And it is for you. As you get sharper in hearing God's voice, you will hear God's voice in steps that you have to take for your life, for your children. And that will be a benefit to you. So don't resist. Don't resist. Don't resist the opportunity to allow yourself to do better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Let, let, let it be done from today. A pastor should study and say, I need four people to prophesy. Just stand up. Listen, by the time you stand up on your feet, the word will drop. That's how God, God recognizes obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I trust that you're getting something out of it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So have a Joshua and Caleb attitude. Amen. Focus on the word of God. Amen. Beware of that evil report. Amen. Beware of evil report. Don't let any come out of your mouth. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. No. Why? Because you know that you are you are to believe God's word. And let's look at Mark 3 25. Mark 3 25. Mark 3 25. Glory to God. Mm. 
Hallelujah. It says that if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And so we are not going to be divided against ourselves. Amen. We're going to be one. Amen. We're going to team up Amen. with the leadership to do what God has called us to Amen. do. And we're going to have the results that God wants us to have. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are married, if you you, 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 you you are separated, or if you are you don't team up, if you don't walk in this world, and you are divided against this, uh, each other, you're not going to stand. You're disconnected. A married couple disconnected, you will not make it. A house, if we're disconnected, we're not going to make it. Yeah. Your spouse is not your enemy. Mm, yeah. You have to know that your spouse is not your enemy. Mm. You sit down, you agree, and you talk about what it is that you have to talk about. If one person is not there, maybe the spouse, uh, one, one, one uh, uh, wife said, when God sp speaks to him, I want God to speak to me too. So that will be easier for me too. <laughs> And that's true. I want God to speak to me too so that it will be easier for me to, you know, flow with him. Hallelujah. But if God doesn't speak to you, but he only speaks to, spoke to one, you sit down and talk about it. Talk about what it is that God wants you to do. And the one who heard the word has to try to bring the one who didn't hear the word into an understanding place. You know what I mean? The Bible says, you know, you're getting good understanding. Bring the person to a level where they understand why you have to do what you're supposed to do. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. And we as a house are not going to be divided against ourselves. Amen. We're going to be one to rally against the leadership and to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Rally around. Rally around. Did I say against? Yes. Oh, right. Thank you for the correction. We're not going to rally against. We're going to rally around and together team up for the purpose of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amos 3.3, three, please. Amos 3.3. 3. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can two work together unless they agree? As a house, you have to, we have to team up. That's right. Let's team up together. Amen. Listen, we saw something. We saw a pastor's sister birthday celebration yesterday on YouTube. It was, it was, it was on Tuesday. This past Tuesday. Oh my goodness, the house was full. The house was full. It was a Tuesday. Listen, where there's a will, there's a way. If you really want to celebrate somebody, you will you 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 will make it happen. The whole place was packed. And they were dressed in white. And they were all dressed in white too. Nobody said I don't look good in white. I'm not going to wear white. Today I'm going to wear blue and I'm wearing my blue. No, they all wore white. <laughs> and the place was full packed on a Tuesday yeah. to celebrate this man of God. Don't let the enemy talk you out of celebrating somebody. Yeah. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Especially a man of God. Mm. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Preach. Listen, we were amazed. We were watching it yesterday and we were like, Wow. And two of the ones of the, it was on a Tuesday because the birthday fell on a Tuesday. So they all decided to gather. The place was packed. That was moving. Yeah. It was a blessing. That's a house that's not divided against each other. Mm. Listen, I mean, they have a, they have a dome. Yeah. And so the, 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 the big, it was huge. It was packed. Yeah. It was packed. It's just a change of mindset. We can do it too. Yes. Whatever it is that God has called, we can do it. Amen. But people just sometimes don't know if they're going or coming. <laughs> when I, they don't know if they're going or coming or whatever. And let's do it right. Amen. Amen. Let's do it right because we can. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did I say Amos? Okay, we read that. All right, let's look at Luke 137 in the Amplified. And then we have one more scripture and we're done. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. Right. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. Yes. No word and no word from God shall be without power of Im or, or, power or, or impossible of fulfillment. That's right. Hallelujah. The word of God will come to pass. Amen. There's power in the word of God for fulfillment. Amen. 
He just wants us to team up with him. He just wants us to agree with him. Because there's power in the word of God for fulfillment. Hallelujah. Let's team up with the word of God and go possess the land God has for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let's look at Hallelujah. Um, First Thessalonians 5.24. I said one. I have one more. Thank you, Jesus. First, thank you. First Thessalonians 5.24. Who? He who calls you is faithful. Let's say, who he, he who calls you, he who calls you. Who is faithful, faithful. Who will also do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's count God faithful. Yes. This is what God wants us to speak. This is how God wants us to speak. And one of my favorite scriptures. Listen, we're going to read it because I just love it so much. But before that, let's go to uh, Psalm 58.3. Real quick. Psalm 58.3. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as. No, okay. 56 3. 56 3 is what I want. This one we'll do it another time. 56 3. <laughs> it says, When I am afraid, I will trust you. Why? Because what God will call you to do, what God has put in your heart to do, you will be afraid. But he says, when I'm afraid, I will still trust the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. So trust the Lord as you listen to your shepherd or as you listen to your head or whoever God has put in your life to push you on to possess the land God wants you to possess. Amen. But one of my favorite scriptures or, or, or favorite accounts in the Bible is when Abraham had to sacrifice his son. It's just one of my favorites. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis 22. I don't think I even wrote it here, did I? Oh, wow. Genesis 22. Yeah, let's read from one. I'll jump in. And I'm going to read it fast. 20, Genesis 22, 1. It says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Let's go. I'll let you know when to stop. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. Six says, so Abraham took the wood of the burnt offerings and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire and his, in his hand and the knife and the Two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offerings? When you make a decision to follow God, when you make a decision to move, God will always provide. That's, right. That's why I said, when you decide to walk up here, because uh, apostle says, come and prophesy. The moment you make a decision to come and prophesy, the word is going to drop. If you think you're going to sit in your chair, oh, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. <laughs> I don't hear anything. You're not going to hear anything. Just step up. Hallelujah. It said, then he said, look the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Glory to God. Go ahead, eight please. Call out Asha. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and, and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know 
Let's all say, now I know that you fear God. And since you have not withheld your son, your only son, some of you, maybe it's your only $50. It's your only, maybe when you calculate your bills, all you have extra is that little money that the church is asking you to bring. But be obedient to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, since you've now heard your only, your only son uh, from me. Hallelujah. Go ahead, 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there, behold, he saw a ram caught in the ticket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Let's get to a place where God will say, now I know. I know Joyce will not hold anything from me. I know Joyce will give me all she has. Her time, her talent, her money, everything. Because she knows that I desire for her the best that I have for her. And I desire for her to even, even take the land that I have oh, yeah. for her to take. This is one of my favorite accounts. After you think you've trusted God, he wants you to trust him again. We'll never stop trusting God. We'll never stop trusting God. Never, 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 never limit God. Never limit the mighty one of Israel. Because he wants the best for you. He wants the best for you. You will never fail if you trust him. You will never fail if you yield completely to him. You will never fail. Because he has your interests at heart. And if the word says that he will perfect everything that concerns you. Because he's a good God. And with this I end. Um, let's go with Galatians 5, 1 and 13. It says, stand firm in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for hearing this message. Hallelujah.